What's up guys, it's Instinct here, and today I'll be showing you guys how to make these mechanical Spider-Man arms in Cinema 4D. For this Cinema 4D tutorial, you guys do not need any plugins, and you guys can do it on any version of Cinema 4D. Check the link in the description, you guys can find a link there where you guys can join my Discord and get a free Lightroom and free materials. And if you guys want this exact project file, you guys can go ahead and click the link in the description and join my Patreon, and you guys get access to all my project files. With all that being said, let's get right into the tutorial. So to start off, I'm going to hold down right here and get an end side, and then change these sides to 3. From here, I'm going to go ahead and hold down right here, get an extrude, and then drag the end side into the extrude. From here, I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees, just because I like working with it upwards rather than towards me. Also, I can, I'm going to jump out of the camera angle just to get a better angle of this. Alright, so from here, what we want to do is make sure it's at 20 centimeters, and then go ahead and click C. From here, what we want to do is open this up, then go ahead and click cap 1, so, uh, click this little button right here, and you guys should be able to um, click this button right here, and you guys should be able to select the caps. So I'm just going to hold, uh, select one of the caps, hold shift, select the other cap, and then select both of the caps, hold shift to select the other cap to multi-select, and then right click, and then click extrude, and then extrude this in a little bit, I'm going to go with like 10 like that and then from here what we want to do is select one of them so I'm just gonna go ahead and select this one for example and then right click and then click smooth shift smooth shift this upwards and then down here uh, just go ahead and type in 10 centimeters and then go ahead and come down here uh, to cap one and then do the same thing right click smooth shift Smooth, this, smooth shift this to 10 centimeters, just like that. And then from here, what we can do is basically do the same thing. So go ahead and select cap two or cap one, and then um, hold shift, select the other one, and then right click, go to extrude, enter, extrude this inwards. I'm gonna go with five centimeters this time. And then actually I'm gonna go with 10 centimeters this time. And then just make sure you select one of them and then extrude, enter or go to smooth shift and then smooth shift this down. I'm going to go with negative 5 this time. There we go. And then just go ahead and do it for the other side. So cap 1, I believe. Yep, cap 1. And then right click, smooth shift. And then just go ahead and smooth shift this in a little bit. And then go to negative 5. Like that. There we go. Yeah. So from here, we can go ahead and give this a uh, base, because this is going to be the base. Alright, so from here, what you want to do is go to MoGraph, and then go to Cloner. And then just go ahead and put this into the Cloner. And then just go ahead and change this, the Y to 0. And then go ahead and change it to Z. And it will go ahead and, you know, um, separate the distance. So, just go ahead, I'm going to probably go with 60. That looks nice. And then you guys can increase the count. And I'm probably going to go ahead and do 50. If you guys want it longer, just go ahead and increase it. And I actually want to increase this to maybe 75. 75, 75 seems a little bit too much. I'm going to go with 70. 70 seems nice. Alright, so we kind of have the base of our mechanical little arm here. So from here, what we want to do is go ahead and select everything like this, hold control, and then right click, and then go to connect objects. And what this will do is it'll put everything into one layer, but it'll also make a new layer so that you still have um, the cloner for later if you guys need it. So go ahead and turn that off so that we just have the uh, base. Now from here, I'm actually going to rotate this uh, 90 degrees like this. Just because I like it going upwards rather than going uh, horizontally. It's, I don't know, it's just a preference. So from here, what you guys want to do is hold down right here and get a twist. And go ahead and put this twist into the cloner. Click fit to parent and then you guys can go ahead and change the angle. So I will recommend 180. Um, but if you guys, if that's too much twist, then go to 90. But in my opinion, that's not enough twist. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna go with 120 this time. I'm gonna go with 120 this time, actually. Alright, and then go ahead and click this button twice, and this will hide this little, like, uh, you know, like the hitbox of the twist. I just find that annoying, so I turn that off. Okay. 
so from here what we want to do is go ahead and turn this off you don't have to but I find it a little bit distracting so uh, what we're gonna do now is create the claw so I'm gonna go ahead and hold down right here on this cube and then get a sphere zoom into the sphere and then make this 300 centimeters and you guys can always increase the size later on but I found 300 works pretty nicely for this tutorial so go ahead and click display go to ground shading and this will turn on the uh, geometry so you guys can see the segments and change this to 18 and then go ahead and click C uh, this will make the um, sphere editable and then go ahead and click this button and then click this button and then you guys can go ahead and select polygons to six out so um, I'm going to go ahead and select uh, click UL this will bring up loop selection and um, you guys have to hit it in sequence by the way uh, just UL um, and if you guys for some reason can't get that to work, you guys can always just do it like this. It's just a you know faster method. But click UL and select both these top two rings and then click delete. And then from here what you guys want to do is go ahead and select the top three and then skip three and then select the next top three. So three and then one, two, three, and then skip those three and then hold shift to multi-select and then Right, so you go three, skip three, three, skip three, then three. So skip three, and then three. And if you did it correctly, you should end up, it should work out evenly. And if it doesn't turn out evenly, you guys either uh, didn't have on 18 segments, or you guys uh, mis, uh, you know, miscounted somewhere. So just go ahead and make sure you have it evenly, just like this. And then from here, you can hold shift, and then bring it all the way down on one of them. And then what we want to do is when you get down to the bottom two, click UL again, and then hold shift, and this will continue multi-selecting, and we'll multi-select the um, bottom ring, and then from here, we want to go back to this, hold shift again, and then fill in these last few segments. Um, so we get something like this, and then do the last final one, just like this. Just like this. And then uh, go ahead and go to select and then go to invert. This will invert your selection and then we just want to delete these segments. Now you guys could select those segments but I find it easier to do it this way. Uh, all right, so from here, we want to do is hit control A uh, while we're on the sphere. This should select everything and also make sure in your face mode, by the way, when you do this. Uh, so just select all the faces and then right click, go to smooth shift and smooth shift this out. It is important that you guys smooth shift it out like this rather than smooth shifting it in like this because there is a difference. So you guys want to make sure you're smooth shifting it out and I do like maybe 30 centimeters, 20 centimeters. It doesn't matter too much. Um, I think it's something like that's good. And then from here, just go ahead and hold down right here, get a subdivision surface and then drag the sphere into the subdivision surface and make sure the arrow is pointing down like that. We'll put it into the subdivision surface to smoothen this thing out. Uh, then just go ahead and click display and then ground shading and you guys can see the model. I'm also going to click subdivision surface and bump this up to three on both of these. All right, so from here, uh, we just have to do the spline wrap. So what we want to do is go ahead and move the cloner down. Um, and so go ahead and click this cube button to do that. I forgot to mention that. Uh, and that will allow you to move the um, model down. So just go ahead and move it down uh, to match is just about there. I'm not going to make mine perfect, but you guys can. And from here, what we want to do is just go ahead and move this over like that. That seems good enough. Something like that. That's good enough. All right. So from here, what we want to do is go ahead and uh, select both of these and then right click and go to connect objects just like this and then again it will put everything uh, into one layer and we just want to uh, select the cloner and hold shift select the subdivision surface and click alt and g this is the claw in the body of the, the mechanical arm but it's just uh, the original one this is just the, um, the new one right, so i'm just going to name this arm for now so you guys don't get confused and then go ahead and hide this all right so from here what we want to do is go ahead and grab the uh, pen tool right here go ahead and click pen tool drag out a spline uh, however you guys would like so you guys can go into here 
And if you guys want it locked on a certain angle or a certain axis, you guys can do that. Or you guys can just draw it in here, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, I like it doing going something like this. So I then turn it about 90 degrees and do something like this. Something. And then click escape when you're done. And that actually seems like a pretty cool spline going on there. So once we have our spline, what we want to do is go ahead and hold right here, or no, no, it is right here, and get a spline wrap, and then go ahead and put the the spline wrap into the arm, I believe, and then go ahead and click the spline wrap, and then put the spline into the spline. Now you're gonna get something crazy wonky like this, and you're gonna like you might like think that's you know something wrong happened, but all you have to do is click access and click this to Y, and just like that, uh, we have this going, except uh, the claw got messed up, I don't know why. I'm just going to go ahead and select the, um, the point and move this around to kind of fix the claw. I'm just going to go ahead and move it downwards, and that should help fix the claw, just like that. And there we go. Move it outwards. To something like this. I don't, that, the claw never, ha like, that never happened before. So it was just the angle of the point. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the point, and then you guys can go ahead and just kind of smoothen that out like that. And I believe that should fix the claw. There we go. So, if you guys get that issue, there you go. You just have to smoothen the point out a little bit more. And you guys should get a nice claw, just like that. Also, it will um, kind of stretch the claw out a little bit, um, but I actually like that because I feel like claws aren't like exactly circle. They're more like an oval, like an egg shape. So, all right. So yeah, that's basically it for the tutorial. Alright, so one last thing you guys can do is select these two, hold Alt G, click that, um, go to the spine wrap and then turn this off again. Uh, then you guys can go ahead and select this, make sure you click this button to select the model, and then you guys can go ahead and move this around, and there we go. Just like that we have a claw, uh, it looks really cool, it's pretty simple to do, um, and yeah, so... Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this tutorial, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what other tutorials you guys would like to see. And with all that said, guys, it's an instinct signing out for now. Peace.